Axiom from Blue Cat Audio, the creative guitar, bass, and effects plugin with no limits. So here we have Axiom from Blue Cat Audio. And Axiom, as you can tell, is a full and complete guitar and bass solution. It's loaded with effects, it's loaded with uh, options and features. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and go through everything here uh, so we can see how to use it. So first up, let me put this back uh, on the, the uh, default. And we're gonna start over here on the input section. There's a lot of different sections here. So let's start over here on the input. So first up, up here, we have our, our overall input, okay? So, got the guitar, turn it down, turn it up. All right, this is the master input, and down here is the master output. Turn that down, turn it up. All right, and those are different from our input here and our output uh, meters or our levels uh, right here. So our master, of course, if I set my master somewhere and I change a preset, that's gonna change. Now my master, whereas over here on my overall output for the plugin, that's not gonna change, all right? Although you can lock down the master section and the input section as well, and that will hold, you know, that, uh, that uh, uh, fader right there. So all throughout this interface, by the way, we can right click any knob, it's gonna set it to the default. We can double click and input a value, whatever you want, all right? That's gonna hold true for every, every knob here. We can also use our mouse scroll wheel to adjust instead of just you know dragging it around uh, there as well. So down here in the input section, you can see we have four slots and here we can put whatever effects we want. We also have an effect section here, an effect section here, which we're gonna get to in just a minute. But here in the input, you can put again, whatever you want, just click, go to select and look at all of these built-in effects. Echoes late reply. Late reply is Blue Cat's, uh, one of their delay uh, plugins, which you can also buy on its own, but here in Axiom, you'll get a sort of a plug-in version that you can use within Axiom. A ton of different distortion pedals, dynamics. So maybe I want a gate, for example. I can go ahead and put my gate right there. It comes up. I can go ahead and make my adjustments to get that set up. So my gate shuts down just how I want. Okay. I can add more. Let me just come in here and just grab maybe something like a compressor, for example. Now, if I want to open up the, that interface again, just click this button right here. You'll see it on each plugin pops it right up for you. If you happen to have a bunch of windows open and you don't know where anything is, I can always click the name here and say center editor. And that's gonna bring that uh, down to the center so I can find it much, uh, much quicker. All right, I can move these things around too, by the way. If I want my gate down here, I can move it down here. I can also take my gate and throw it over here if I want, just as an example. Uh, if I wanna change uh, how these are stacked, I can just set it right sort of in the middle there and that should, flip those around as you can as you can see also uh, if i want to bypass say the compressor i can bypass it right here bypass the gate right there all right and if i have something i like here and i want to go through some more presets uh, up here you know full factory presets i can lock down that input section 
And now when I go to a different preset, it's not going to change my input section. Whereas if that was turned off, that lock was off and I go ahead and go to something else, you can see, well, now my, uh, how I had it set up was completely, completely gone. Let me put this back on the default and we're going to come up here to select and we're going to go actually let's come up here now. Let's use our hamburger drop down and do a select effects strip. We'll just grab a full strip here. Uh, let's see. Let's just grab something. Say guitar preamp. So it's just got a preamp plugin. I can click that name and do show editor. And that'll bring it up. And this is Destructor, which is also built in. Destructor is also a separate plugin that you can buy, uh, but it's also built in here uh, as well. This uh, Axiom is built off of Destructor, uh, by the way. Now we can click on here again, say no plugin, for example. But if I were to, just as an example, if I were to set something up here, let's just grab a couple of things, just throw late replies in there, which you get as part of Axiom anyway. If I have something in here that I like and I'm gonna use over and over, hamburger icon, save as, give it a name, you can go ahead and save that and recall the full strip uh, whenever you uh, whenever you want to uh, recall it. We also have there's some other uh, other uh, effects included in here, something else you might wanna do. Let's go up here to our effects slot and come down here to uh, built-in effects and we also get re-guitar built-in. Let's go and open that up. So re-guitar is also a separate plugin you can buy to use on its own, but you'll get it inside of Axiom. You can use it inside of Axiom uh, if you have Axiom, okay? So what you can do with this plugin is it lets you change the sound of your guitar. So if I have a humbucker, I want it to sound like a single coil. I can choose single coil and a bunch of different types of single coils. I can, I can make it sound like an acoustic guitar. I can change the type of humbucker that I'm using. It's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool program here. Humbucker. But you can also change it to say an acoustic. Pull this up a bit here. All right. So now we sound basically like a uh, an acoustic guitar here with this nine string, which is crazy. Just want to show that that that's another thing that you can uh, indeed do, which is pretty cool to have that uh, built in. Now, as you probably notice, as I'm cl uh, clicking on this here on our slots to select a built-in plugin, you're probably also noticing uh, noticing this load VST. That's right, you can actually load VSTs, any VST you want, right within Axiom, okay? Uh, and VST3s, and by the way, right now we're in Studio One, but this also holds true even if you're in Pro Tools, and as we know, as Pro Tools users, we can only use AAX plugins within Pro Tools, but if you have Axiom within Pro Tools, you can load any VST inside of Axiom, uh, as well, which is pretty cool. Another thing you can do, just to mention it, is you can actually load another Axiom within Axiom, and you can really make this as crazy uh, as you want, or of course, make it as simple as you want, okay? But as far as the built-in effects goes, tons of effects, probably all you're ever gonna need. Uh, we even have like a harmonizer, which we saw at the beginning. We've got a pitch shifter, a pitch bender, like a, uh, like a whammy pedal, uh, for example, that we have uh, in here as well. Uh, we'll get to the load VSTs when, once we get over to the uh, to the uh, uh, pre area here. But moving on from the input section down here is a uh, built in tuner. So by default, it's going to be off. Just click it turns it on. Tune up here. It's a pretty good tune overall. The only problem I've ever noticed is when I get down to my ninth string and my ninth string is really dropped. It's down to a this one's a bit tough, so I might need you to uh, use the harmonic to tune that one or the 12th fret to tune it up. All right. But even on the eighth string here down to E, it picks that up pretty well. All right. So built in tuner. And then as we mentioned up top, you have uh, the output essentially for your input section right here, which you can adjust if you need to sort of you know, compensate for some of the other uh, uh, effects that you might have uh, put in here. All right. Okay, so that is our input section. Oh, 
All right, so on to our pre-effects. But before we get to pre-effects, we need to, uh, need to talk about the A and the B. So as you can see, we can actually set up two completely different mixes. Uh, we can have two amps, we can have two chains of you know, plugins here, or pre-effects uh, and post-effects, by the way. All completely separate and just switch between them. We can mix between them. We can have a little A, a little B. We can have all a B, so on and so forth. We can set up MIDI here, MIDI learn this to a knob or to a pedal or something and switch back and forth between A and B really quick. But let's do this here. Uh, so for A, I'm just gonna come up to our full preset and just grab something sort of at random here. Good enough for what we want. Turn that volume down a bit. All right. I can turn off the A section just by clicking the power button. So over here on B, let's select B, turn it on. So right now it's on, let's pull this over here. Right now it's just on the default. So I can come in here and start setting things up or I can say come over here and select an amp channel and maybe do uh, again something sort of just to random here. Just grab that there. All right. And say over here, I'm just gonna grab something again, kind of at random. Just throw that on there. All right, turn it down. So now we have two separate things, two separate chains, uh, all, all set up. A, click A, you can see pre-effects A, you can see amp A, you can see post-effects A, click B, you get pre-effects uh, B, amp B, and post-effects B, all right? So up here we can go over to A, so this is just the A sound. Then over here is just the B sound that reverb on it and of course mix between those if you wanted to you can adjust the volume for each chain to level it out in case one side is way louder than the other one we can pan them i can pan a over here and say b over there then level them out you can always see your meters right here for your total output give you an idea how to adjust everything fully to A, right click here on the pan, center that out, right click here on this pan, just center all this stuff out. All right, so I can turn off the entire B section, boom, right there, or turn off the entire A section uh, right there as uh, as well. And as you saw there, uh, whenever we use the hamburger menu here for, for, uh, for B, we can also save as if we have, you know, a slot that we want to save all of that and always load those up right uh, right here if you have some sort of a channel uh, setting that you want to set up and recall. So now let's move on to our pre effects. Now this is usually where you're going to put things like pedals and stuff like that. So we're going to have the same effects over here as well. Let's go ahead and just remove that uh, plugin. Now I can come over here to my uh, hamburger icon again, and I can select a whole strip of presets that are already set out for us. So maybe I could do something like this uh, digi synth bass flange that gives me let me just go ahead and show the editor. A wave shaper here. There's a crusher right there. A filter here. And a flanger there. Hear what that sounds like. I can cycle through those presets. By using those arrows. And if you set something up here, again, just by clicking on something here, select, say, a distortion. We'll just say uh, this orange distortion there. We set something up. We can, of course, save this as our preset. So again, from the hamburger menu, just save as, give it whatever name you want. And you can always recall that, uh, that whole section. We can drag and drop these around wherever we need to put them. Let me grab one more here. Just uh, something at random. There we go. If I want to change the arrangement, I'm going to grab the flanger and move it till I get that straight line and drop it there. Then it moves it around, as you can see, pushes those around. If I just grab, say, this orange distortion and put it on top of the pitch, it's going to end up replacing that, uh, replacing that pedal. All right. Again, open your icon or your, your window right there for anything you want. Click on the name and go through presets here. We also have the option. Let's just grab something else and put it in here. Flanger again. That works. Up here now in the toolbar, if I click this button, it shows the pre-pedal controls. So click that. And now I can see my controls for my flanger. If I just open up the window, you can see here's the delay control, the depth control, 
the rate control all right here without having to actually open up the window. I can just select the other ones and adjust them from this window here, this pane, instead of actually hopping into the actual uh, actual effect. Now, if I, if I like something that I have, again, you can save that. You can also lock it down here. So then you lock it down, then you start uh, going through presets here. And it's not gonna change your pre-effects, all right? I can bypass the, the entire pre-effects chain with this button right there. All right, so let's load up a VST in this. I'll just choose load VST. This drops me into the default location that we have set up. So you can change that right here with your wrench icon. See program files, VST plugins. Uh, now, if you're on Mac, by the way, you can actually load AU as well, but I'm on Windows so we can load VST. So you can change this directory if you want. You can also, let's just head back in here, say load VST. If it drops you into the wrong folder, you can always just navigate to any other uh, folder that you need to uh, navigate to. But uh, say I want to load a Waves plugin, I can actually do that. Let me just uh, grab my, one of my Waves shells here, select that, open it up. And now it's going to ask me which plugin do I want to insert. And let's say I want a, um, a ship's omni-channel stereo right in here. So then I can load that right up, right within Axiom. And there it is. We turn off those there. So you see, it's reacting. Right? And even whenever you have your VSTs in here, in your, uh, say your pre-section or any of these sections, you can save this as, give it whatever name you want. And whenever you recall it, it's going to recall that VST as well. All right. So again, load VST or load VST3. And anything you want, not just the Blue Cat uh, plugins, but uh, whatever, whatever you want. You could even load another. Uh, you know, another amp in here, you know, if you wanted to. Maybe I want um, an SSL console from Plugin Alliance directly within my pre-effects. Not a problem. I can do it. Need to uh, reset my license here. Real quick. Boom. I'm back. Uh, back in business now. Okay. So again, anything you want, any VST plugin, also AU plugins if you uh, happen to be on Mac. And of course, come over to B, set up a completely different chain. Uh, let's go to VST3 here real quick. And let's just say we want um, Mega Duel on that, which is a, uh, there we go, a guitar amp from uh, Plugin Alliance. So we could actually have a guitar amp within our guitar amp and you can do all kinds of uh, crazy stuff uh, like this. I could bypass this amp section and I could have Mega Duel in here. Right? And play that and then I could use all of the effects uh, that are built in here as well. So there's a ton of things you can do uh, with Axiom as you can see. All right, onto the amp section. So we have the default amp right now. Not a lot going on on the default amp. We can actually design and build our own amps as well, which we'll look at pretty quickly here. Uh, we can turn off the entire amp section right there. Uh, you can see your meters right there. Click here, load up a factory preset. Use your arrows. And there's hundreds of, you know, different presets, just tons of them, all kinds of different sounds. It's a pretty cool one here. Satanic chunk or chug, satanic chug. All right. All kinds of stuff uh, in here. Way too many to go through in here, but uh, just realize tons and tons of different uh, presets in here that you can go through. Now over here we have our hamburger icon, so we can go through presets right here, grab something right there. Uh, we can also do our MIDI input, which we'll look at uh, later on. 
Uh, we come here to the gear icon and we can show the controls if you want to say MIDI to learn that. Then, turn this down. Turn this down a bit. All right, we'll start with that right there. So click this icon right here. This is show and hide the tone map. So open that up. And let me actually move this over a bit here. So in the tone map, we can use presets for different uh, different tones. So an example would be, let's go to this guitar crunch. You can see it changed my amp right there. I can hit my plus. It's gonna put it over here in my tone map. Okay, put my icon over that for now, the target. All right. Let me add something else in there, maybe dark crunch. It's creamy. Add something else in there. I can just go through here, finding all of these different presets. And this is, we're on the main, by the way. So we also have a pre, a distortion or destruction in post as well. But here on the main, you can see what happens as I start adding these in. Add this one in, add this one in, add whatever you want in. All in here, high gain, maybe a high gain right there. Just loading up my tone map right now. And now, as I go through these, as you can see, let me squeeze this down a little bit so we can see the amp here. As I go between these with my icon, you can see the amps change there, the presets. What this lets you do is pretty quickly and easily uh, sort of uh, set up like hybrid tones. Combinations, you know, combinations of several tone maps. Pretty good, wouldn't it? All right, so you can really do this all day long and set up something exactly uh, how you want it. Now, as I mentioned, we're on the main here. We also have the pre section, the destruction section, and the post. So in the pre section, again, you have more presets here for the pre section. Uh, guitar pre, there's vintage heads, uh, a bunch of stuff in here. Just add that in. Start building up your tone map. And I should probably hop in here real quick into destructor. You can see the preamp, the destruction, and the post filter right there. Okay, so that's what I mean uh, by this tone map right here is we can choose sort of how this amp is you know put together. Like a real amp is put together. Here we have our gate and the compressor there on the uh, on the input, and then the preamp, the destruction phase, and then the post filter, which is essentially kind of like our cabinet uh, in this case. All right. So if I change something here, add some different types of preamps there, go between them. You see they end up changing over here as well. Okay, so I just wanna make that clear first. Let's go back here to main real quick. Another thing we can do uh, in setting up your tone, we could come up here to your hamburger icon again, uh, select and then say factory, maybe factory guitar, and let's just say guitar distortion pedals. Now we have all that laid out for us. And then again, as you know, just take your, just take your target and drag it around wherever you want. You can come up with all kinds of different sounds like that. I can trash that tone map there, load up something that I want here, something different. If I use my mouse wheel to scroll in here and I'm looking around, because say you have a lot of maps loaded up, you can locate that icon, your target, just by clicking this button here. All right, scroll out uh, with your scroll wheel to scroll all the way out there. All right, now let's move on to this E to go into the uh, amp editor. And in here, you can really, like I said at the beginning, you can really you know, make your own amp. Uh, if you don't want to use the tone editor, you can really come in here and set things up however you want. So you have your in gate to gate things off if you want. Pull this up, pull the threshold up, obviously. It's gating it off before it gets to the amp. And then the compression that happens uh, to the input signal. 
set that up however you want. Lock this stuff down uh, as well. Then set up your preamp. Again, lock stuff down. Turn off the preamp. Turn on the preamp. Choose different preamps that are already set up. Then in here, in the destruction section, same stuff, all kinds of different, uh, like distortion, progressive crunch here. So if you really, like I said, if you really want to come in here, you want to make this super complicated, you want to come in here and uh, let's go to vintage heads and really make your own kind of an amp, you can uh, you can do that. Then the post filter. Let's go uh, guitar cabs and SLD. We can also come up here to the hamburger icon, go to presets and load up uh, full presets here. High gain. That changes everything, my preamp, my destruction and the post filter section right there. And then we have these buttons over here. So we can just basically change the skin real quick uh, to whatever we want for each of these, whatever you happen to prefer. There we go. You have the minus icon, show less or show more on each of these. If you need to, uh, you know, collapse it down, uh, we can change our presets up here too, uh, by the way, for that's the preset for everything. And then we can edit this further. Now, remember, we're in this amp section. We hit the E there to go to the amp editor. That lets us edit everything about the amp, but we can then go into what's basically like an expert mode and go into the edit mode for each of our, uh, you know, our preamp, our destruction and our post filter. So if I choose that, now we can see exactly what's going on back here. And then I can really start to shape these filters even further. Let me turn off those just to hear that preamp. And I can start dialing this in however I want manually turn this back on of course sounds bad without the cab so i'm really customizing uh, my preamp now i can of course customize here in the uh, amp section choose that so from here i can really start to shape this uh, distortion and really change it to whatever I want. So analog, here's digital, dynamic, hard, soft, special, flat. Choose a bunch of different presets down here. We have presets up here. We can choose corrosive. You can already hear that. Expand this out here and really shape. Again, really shape this. However you want. So like I said, you can really get in there and start messing around with this, or you can sort of just use presets and then tweak from the uh, easy mode, the easy section, or use your tone maps to sort of dial things in. But if you want to dig in there, you can dig in basically as far as you can go if you really want to set things up. And of course, always remember uh, to save your full presets so you can, uh, you can recall them. And then we have our post filter, which is essentially like your cabinet. Okay, let's go into the uh, expert mode here. And again, you can shape this basically like, like an impulse response. You can shape this uh, by coming in here and starting to adjust things. Do it manually if you want. If I don't like that, pull down the fizziness on top. Let me pull this comb filter up here. All right, so I've, I've already customized my cabinet now. Uh, I can come down here. Uh, we can manage our impulse responses. We can load impulse responses, copy. Impulse responses, paste them. Uh, we can come in here. We can load reference curves. We can uh, save our filter curve as if I want to re be able to recall that curve uh, somewhere else. So over here, I have a ton of impulse responses. These here are from Red Wires. Uh, go check them out if you want to grab a bunch of impulse responses. 
So we can load impulse responses directly within uh, Destructor here. So let's just look at what happens first. Let me grab this Neumann, uh, the this, this Sheffield cab. We'll say U87 uh, cap uh, on the cap there. Just grab it. I can drop it right on this post filter. And as you can see, it loads right up there. Okay, it loads right up. I can, of course, come over here and try to load an IR and do it this way. Load that up. If I wanted to, I could unload the IR. I can copy the IR and I can paste that somewhere else by, you know, if I wanted to, I could paste it in there to the preamp. So now we've really changed the sound there. We unload that IR. Back to easy mode there. Also, let me do this again. Let me come back. Uh, just grab an SM7 and I could uh, drag that in here, right? I can, of course, customize the impulse response by dragging any of this stuff around. And have your custom curve there. We can always save, you know, reference curves and things like that. All right, we have a spectrum analysis there. So like I said, basically all the tools you need if you really wanna dig in there and start to customize things. Now we actually don't have to jump back here into this expert section to load up an impulse response, okay? So let's close down Destructor here again in this uh, editor section of our amp, okay? So right now we have the Lost Angel. I just want you to see that, Lost Angel, all right? So again, out here on the amp section, if I just grab an impulse response and drop it right on the amp, I can grab it, drop it right on the amp, and it's gonna load it for me. So that's our uh, 5150 Sheffield. This is um, uh, Cone Edge Zero, okay? So let's hop, uh, hop back there, and then we can see in here that it's been loaded right there. 5150 Sheffield 1200 SM57 Cone Edge Zero Inches, which is uh, exactly the one that we dropped directly on the amp. So we didn't even have to come back here. All right, so if all you're really wanting to do is try out uh, impulse responses for your cabinet, you can just drop them right on the amp, all right? Let me grab this again here. Let me come back real quick. And we'll grab a completely different kind of a cab so you can really uh, hear the difference here. Again, not gonna go to the expert section, just Hear that, just grab it, drop it right on. Okay, so you can do that as well. So a lot of stuff in that amp section. If you, again, head back here and you really dig in there, make sure you always save that so you can recall your custom amps uh, whenever you want. All right, so on to the post effects section. So basically the same thing as the uh, pre effects section, except this is going to be after the amp. So things like course you might want back here. Of course, just depends. Things like delay you might want back here. Reverb you might want back here just to get sort of a sense of width, uh, you know. But uh, it's essentially the same thing as the pre effects. We have A and we have B, so you can have completely separate chains. And of course, mix between them uh, there as well. Let's click here, select again, select whatever you want, all kinds of things you can choose from, utilities, MSD code, gain level effects, put re guitar back here, pitch shifter back here, a harmonizer as we saw at the beginning, even put another uh, axiom uh, back here as well. Uh, if we wanted to say maybe late replies in there, and late replies is a uh, separate plugin you can buy, but if you have axiom, uh, you can use it within axiom. So if I needed a reverb on that, again, you can throw on whatever you want. There's a reverb. Throw a harmonizer on that. Uh, let's go with modulation, maybe a chorus on that. And again, just like the pre-effects, you set up something that you like, head over here and you can save as and save that full strip. So you can always recall it. 
You can turn off the whole post effects section right here. You can lock it down right there. You can come over here and select a full preset for your strip. So say room verb. Next one there. And you can also change the name of these things, by the way. Uh, if you set something up, it's called reverb. If I want to rename this to, you know, my reverb or whatever it is, you know, like reverse, that one's already called reverse, but we call it reverse two or whatever. You can rename all of those effects, uh, uh, effects as well. Again, movies around just like we can in the pre pretty, uh, self-explanatory stuff, uh, there. Now, as, as we saw in the pre, we can load VSTs like this, but another thing you can do that we didn't show is that we can also load VST plugins directly from the file system. So anything I want, so maybe I want, um, I don't know, let's just see something here, uh, an Ozone 8 equalizer. Instead of going through here, I can just go right to my file system and just uh, grab it and drop it right in there, right there, as you can see. Turn those off. All right, so as mentioned, post effects is after the amp. So this is a really good place to put a lot of spatial things a lot of times. Generally, you're not gonna put distortions and things like that after the amp. You can if you're just trying to do something creative, but you know, generally things like reverb work good back here, chorus works good back here, flanger can work good, although chorus and flanger can work good uh, pre as well. You just have to think about your signal flow. You know, do you want the sound of a chorus or a reverb or a delay going into the amp and then coming out? Or do you want the sound of your guitar going into the amp and then that being, you know, reverberated or delayed or, you know, chorus effect, whatever, right? So again, do a ton of stuff here. We could also do EQs and filters. I could put the uh, uh, comb filter IR on here. For There's some cool sounds there. You can also do an EQ. So here I have some EQ IRs. I could just drop it on there and have that, uh, of course, take effect. Do guitar cabinets as well. And also, as we saw with the pre effects, we have this button right here. Click that. And now you can see the controls for each of your pedals without having to actually open. You know, open them up even things like ozone there which is our vst plugin uh, we have we can see all that right here and control that right here as well All right, so on to the master section. If you already know about the input section, then you know about the master section. We just change our preset here. You can see as I change presets, it's gonna change whatever is on the master section. Uh, so I can lock that down. It's not going to, uh, not gonna change if you don't want it to change. Uh, just like our input section over there, you can select from any of the built-in effects. And of course, also from VSTs or VST3s to load up in here. Click your hamburger icon, you can save as, and you can of course save that and recall the entire strip. We can load a strip right up here, any of the factory strips. It's a crazy tail, so crazy tail, uh, open up that interface right here. That of course gives us a late reply. Turn this up. Now keep in mind the master section, everything is gonna be feeding the master section, right? So it's the input to all, into our splitter here, essentially like a splitter. Uh, then we have pre effects, then our amp, then the post, and all that then goes through the master. Okay. Of course, turn off whatever you want, bypass it, change where it is in the chain just by dragging it around. All right. Then down here, you have a spread. So this is the stereo width. If I make that very narrow. Widen it out. 
You can see over here on the meters that now we have stereo separation there. Whereas if the spread is down here, look at the meters. It's the same left and right. All right. Then the overall output right here, just in case you need to compensate for something that happens to be in the master up here. Of course, don't forget your overall output is up here as well. Okay. And this button right here is a limiter. All right. So that is uh, everything here, all of our different sections. So now let's move on to our uh, top toolbar there. All right, so on to the top toolbar here. So there's a lot of stuff up here. Number one, we're over here, you have your window opacity. So if you want to pull that down, you can pull it down, sort of see through it real quick, uh, you know, down to your tracks, as we've already seen up here. We can recall presets, you can default things out. If you have something that maybe you set up uh, or something that you just like, right? So say I really like this here. I really like that. And the next time I open up Axiom, you know, maybe I'll load something up here too. Let's just uh, grab that. So load that up there too. So if I really like that, and I want this to come up every time I open up Axiom, I can go ahead and set this as the user default. Just select that. So now, let me uh, close it down. When I load up Axiom again, I'll just drag it onto a track here in Studio One, it opens up with uh, what I just defaulted. So my mic can't dance uh, sound there. All right, so if you go through all the trouble go through all the trouble of setting something up you might want to just uh, default that so that way every time you open up axiom there's your perfect sound set up and ready to go and also by the way you can use axiom as a standalone uh, instrument as well it doesn't have to be used you know here within a, a daw all right so we have that uh we can what else can we do in here we can copy presets uh, paste presets as we said set user default we can clear the user default there a lot of stuff uh, we can do in there. Of course, use your arrows to just go between them. So over here now, with our hamburger icon, we can also browse our presets here. We have preset skins. Uh, that's something we're not gonna, not gonna get into here. Preset settings, this is where the skin file path is there. We have control input uh, that we can use for enabling MIDI and things like that, all within this page here. You can see all those parameters that we can uh, use right there. Uh, we'll check out this gear icon here in just a second. We have undo and redo. So if you do a bunch of stuff, you can undo stuff and redo stuff right here. You can open up your manual by clicking right there. Uh, we can choose the about here. We can use our zoom right here on the, uh, the magnifying glass icon. So put this down to hundred percent. It's going to make the, uh, display smaller. So you can see, or we can click this and go back up to my case. I like 140. There we go. So we can see it nice and easily there. We can show our meters or not. So as you can see, we turn this up. So our meters, we can turn those off or turn them on. Turn that down. Right here, we have a preset browser. So instead of browsing these presets up here, we can browse presets over here. And we can also dig down to the A side and the B side and the preamp, the amp, all. Okay, so you can do a lot of things from this preset browser uh, as well. So here on the main, just as an example, we go to crunch and I just do our all blue. See, it changes everything there. If I wanted to instead, use that up arrow to go back, you know, back a step. If I wanted to instead uh, dial just uh, down on the A side here, let me turn off this B side. Just the A side, I can do just the A side presets over here. We unlock that. But as I said, we can come in here to the pre effects and dial down even further. I can grab just things for the pre effects here. Say just the uh, amp presets right here, just post effect presets over here. Click your ellipses there, and you, then you have tool rack presets went into the factory. This is happens to be empty. Let's go to the master. So I can set up a console strip as you can see it. Move this over a bit. You can see it right there. Okay. Input presets. As we know over here, the input section right here as well. So a lot of stuff you can do in the preset browser if you don't want to go through each of these individually. 
or go through this browser uh, up here. You can always open up that preset browser and really go through, uh, you know, a ton of stuff there. All right, close that down. Next thing, we already saw these icons here where we can see the, uh, the controls for our pedals right here on the interface. Then we have show assigned controls, which we'll look at uh, in just a minute. We can lock the general state of the GUI up here. And we already saw this uh, wrench icon where you can choose your VST uh, VST uh, location, your default location. Of course, always just navigate, right? The file system, once you click that open VST, just navigate anywhere, you know, anywhere that you want. All right. And of course, as we saw, just drag it in from the file system as well. Just drop it on any of these uh, slots. All right. So that is the top toolbar. Let's move on to the next uh, section now. So say you have a guitar sound all set up that you happen to like. Well, guess what? If we come up here and we click this icon that says show tools rack, click that. Again, now keep in mind, you can also run Axiom standalone, okay? So this might come more into play there uh, versus using it in a DAW, but you can do this uh, in a DAW as well. So what tools is going to allow you to, to do is you can actually load instruments in here as well. So as an example, if I wanted to load... Um, you know, BFD three in here or some other drum program in here. I could, uh, I could do that. So if I just go to the load, uh, VST come in here, let's just say, uh, cult drums. I can open that up within, uh, Axiom here. Instead of loading it on a track, I can actually load it, uh, with an Axiom. And there it is. As you can see, it's loaded up here within, <laughs> within Axiom. So you can load up a synth, you can load up whatever kind of instrument that you want. And uh, we uh, have a MIDI track already set up here, uh, going to Blue Cat's Axiom, so I can, I can play it like that if I wanted to. I could uh, you know, load up any MIDI files or something like that on a track. Uh, and again, that's playing through Axiom. And of course, you can play along. You know, play along your, play along your uh, guitar to that as well, all from within Axiom. So if you want to set something up, you can set up essentially every, well, almost everything you need for an entire band, all within Axiom. You can save all of that as a uh, preset, and you can recall that whenever you want. I mean, I, I've actually uh, saved a full preset here. So if I select this, you can see it starts loading up uh, contact. Uh, because I actually saved contact and BFD3 in a preset here. <laughs> so you have your uh, guitar. We have contact within uh, within Axiom here. Pull this over here. Who knows when you're going to need an orchestra with a heavy guitar, right? Have BFD3 within here as well. All right. And again, keep in mind, you can run uh, Axiom in standalone. So this, in my opinion, comes a little more into play in standalone since in a DAW, you, you can always have this stuff on separate tracks. But if you wanted to, you can load up a, you know, a bunch of uh, instruments within the tools section here as well. You can lock it down. We can uh, select tool racks if you happen to you know, save something. If you just want to recall just the tool racks, uh, you can do that as well. <laughs> Right. Let's look at a uh, MIDI. As I mentioned a few times, we can uh, use MIDI to uh, control things. We can also map our parameters if you want to do things like automation. There's a ton of stuff you can do in here. So let's come up here to the gear icon. Select that. Then we have this drop down. So if I wanted to control any of these things with MIDI, say maybe the pan or maybe this mix here, I can use my down arrow here and say MIDI, MIDI learn. But of course, I need to you know set that up in my DAW to make sure I have uh, MIDI input there. So make sure I say MIDI learn here. Then I'm just moving a knob on my controller, and now I have that learned. Okay, so I can unlearn that now or turn learn off. I can close down the MIDI section, and then I can just use that knob to uh, to adjust that uh, that parameter. You can do the same thing. Uh, you know, with anything that you see the green on, 
Now, some things like here, down here on the amp, uh, it has its own section, so I can use show controls there, and I can MIDI learn uh, those things there uh, as well. Now, there's a lot of things you can do in here uh, with mapping parameters as well. So up here is another, another button that says show assigned controls. We have no controls mapped. Uh, we can come here and say parameter maps, map all parameters. I can say learn mode, I turn learn mode on and I move something here, say drive. Make sure I show this here. Now you can see I have that parameter mapped here. We can use this with automation. We can use it with a ton of different things. Of course, each DAW is going to uh, handle automation differently, but you can see now I had that mapped right there. Uh, if I really want to dig in here, I could dig into something like this, right? As I'm moving these things, I'm actually, as you can see down here, let me just close that now, because I move those things, now I can actually control them right here as well. But there's a ton of different things that you can map, of course. So here on this pad of fire, pad map, uh, I can map the L1, L2 time, I can map that. You know, so now I'm controlling, let me open this up so you can actually see. Now you can see what we're doing there. I have that map down here, all right? I can even uh, use MIDI down here as well. Can MIDI learn this. All right, so I believe we have now gone through every single parameter, uh, everything that you can do here in Blue Cat's Axiom. As you can tell, it's incredibly deep. Also, let me come in here real quick. I didn't show the, uh, let's come in here. We have uh, effects come here to say a pitch bender. So we have the essentially like a whammy pedal in here too. A little bit octave. You can head over to uh, Blue Cat Audio. Of course, link will be in the description if you want to check it out. You can also demo it for free so you can dig in there. Uh, and see if it's something that you uh, want to pick up and add to your arsenal uh, for your guitar and for your bass. I really didn't show bass here, but it can do bass, uh, bass as well. So that is Blue Cat's Axiom. Again, it's absolutely loaded with features, loaded with that re-guitar, loaded with Destructor, loaded with uh, the ability to load VSD plugins or VST3 plugins or AU plugins on Mac, uh, able to uh, uh, automate things or control things uh, with MIDI. You can map your parameters. You can delve in there and create brand new preamps, brand new kinds of uh, distortion, different kinds of uh, impulse responses or load impulse responses or create different curves for your cabinet. Really delve in there and do whatever you want. Make it as simple as you want or as complicated uh, as, you, as you want here in Blue Cat's Axiom. And like I said, make sure you save a preset, okay? Uh, because you don't want to do all that work and then just, you know, just close out and all your hours and hours uh, uh, are gone. All right, so again, tons of stuff, as you can tell for, if you watch the whole video, tons of stuff you can do in this, uh, in this program. Blue Cat's Axiom, again, link to check it out, to buy it or to demo it will be in the description below. But this is the definitive guide to Blue Cat's Axiom.